Mr. Secretary, 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 Mr. Secretary,
Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches have been a competitive sport for as long as we've had peanut butter. In 1895, some guy named Kellogg was so upset about being named Kellogg that he pretended to invent peanut butter 11 years after it had been invented. Everybody believed Kellogg, and ever since then the competitive scene in PB&J has been incredibly low, with any method of construction being considered acceptable. I'm Chef Spork, and I find this atrocious. <sighs> There's a perfect formula out there. I majored in jelly with a minor in peanut butter. These sandwiches are my bread and... Uh, man, 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 it's... Oh! The current PB&J meta involves spreading peanut butter on both sides of the bread and then spreading jelly into the center, thus ensuring that the jelly doesn't soak into the rest of the bread. Contrary to what your grandma might tell you, this makes the jelly extremely claustrophobic. It won't talk to anybody at the party, and it'll end up leaving around 10.30 feeling like shit. Nice work, Grandma. I hope spreading that myth was worth ruining the best years of this jelly's life. Two out of five stars. This next method, I have a personal connection to. My mom used to make this for me after I would accidentally walk into my dad's drinking room. So, do you spread the jelly or the bread for... Um, this next method, it would touch me in my time in the Bermuda Triangle. It's a careful blend of uh, use of the... God damn it! Yeah, and you're telling me that this is the most that I can order? It doesn't matter why. I'm not asking you why. I'm asking you if this is the most I can order. Legal limit? You're telling me that there is a legal limit on the amount of peanut butter and jelly that I can order? <sighs> and suddenly you're all about the law? That's funny because that is not how I remember our time in Guatemala. Are you filming right now? Are you f***ing filming right now? So, things have gotten a little off the rails. The cameraman has been bringing a really aggressive attitude to the set, and I think it has made everybody else uncomfortable. Nobody will seem to look me in the eyes, so he must really be bringing things down. I was under the impression that the only people who were on this set were professionals, but I guess this goes to show you can't trust the reviews on Yelp. <sighs> Had to be jelly! I couldn't double major it! HAD TO BE JELLY! They just don't get it. They think this is some sort of joke. Everybody always tells me the same things. What are you talking about? Jelly isn't a real major, and your credit card has been declined. I have to find this formula. I have to surpass Kellogg. <sighs> oh, oh, what's this? Oh, you made your own sandwich, huh? You like it? Can you tell me, hey, real quick, what's, what's that? And it's over here too. Is that, that's jelly. So you're, you're okay with having the jelly just, I mean, on the edges? Is it okay all over here? Is it, is it, is it okay over there? Is that good? I know what I have to do. Kellogg told me. It's the same thing that he did 130 years ago. I need to become something more. I wanted to rise above my peers, but I can be better. I can become a symbol become something greater than myself. In life, you can either be a spreader or a stacker. I've been spreading for too long, letting them thin me out. Now I know, I am the perfect peanut butter and jelly formula. They won't believe me. They never believed me. But this time I'm not going to leave them a choice. 
I'm going to be the only peanut butter and jelly formula. It's too late for me to turn back, and I've come too far to stop now. Not until all PB&J sandwiches are a part of me. I won't rest as so long as I hear the voice of Kellogg pushing me forward. It may take my entire life. It may take everything I have. But I know where it begins. Oh, oh my god, you know, you, you look great. Tell me, tell me your secret. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm actually down 3.2 pounds. I switched to the keto diet. Oh, that's really cool. See, I'm actually doing the primal diet personally. Hmm. You know, I tried primal, but I was really missing the butter. So then I found out that the keto is 50% butter, so I switched to that. Oh. That's great. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, New Year's resolutions, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. What's your New Year's resolution, Olivia? Oh, you know, same as last year. Trying to stick my diet to more, uh, the, more, for more than two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what diet have you been on? Oh, I've been on the floor food diet. Hmm. I don't think I've heard of that one. What is that? Oh, it's um, so it's like where you where you eat food off the floor. Wait, I'm confused. So like, you sit on the floor and eat it. There's a plate on the floor? <laughs> um, uh, no. So off the floor, I'm eating the food, um, okay? And look, it, like more like scavenging, 80% of your food in the floor food diet needs to be scavenged or else you might as well be living off of a table-based lifestyle. Oh, so that's like to build germ immunity? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great for German Mimi, and it's also good for weight loss. It's good for boosting testosterone, boosting estrogen, all those things. But, like, I just I just really like eating food off the floor. And this, this helps you lose weight? Oh, yeah. No, it's like, well, it's, it's because it's, it's really hard to find food on the floor. So, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, no, this whole experience has really opened my eyes to how much we need a fresh food directly on the floor experience. I'm actually talking with investors right now to create the first farm to floor restaurant in Ohio. Hey, you know what, that, that's actually pretty cool. How's that been going for you? Well, it's, it's honestly kind of difficult. Um, I mean, investors are just chomping at the bit to get at it, but like, you know, you gotta go through all those health and safety inspectors first, and that's, yeah. I can only yeah. imagine. Yeah, so. no, no. Um, that's the thing, though, is like they know a lot, right? But it's they just don't they don't understand that the tapeworm is the main draw of the floor food diet. The what? Oh, the tapeworm. The thing they don't friggin' tell you about the floor food diet is that you have a better possibility of getting a tapeworm with the floor food diet than if you were living on a table-based lifestyle. You know, I think I'm actually doing the same thing. Ta tapeworm, yeah, tapeworm. No shit. Yeah, no, you should join the floor food diet. Wait, so both of you have tapeworms? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess I got to try your diet. There you go. I'm the friendly tapeworm, and I'm here to say, try a floor diet for sure today. Yummy, yummy food, all from the floor. You say it sounds gross? I say I want more. Germs, dirt, and tapeworms, what a delight. I'm eating food off the floor all day and all night. <clears throat> Hi everyone, Tapeworm Timmy here. On a more serious note, fad diets like paleo and keto can be very harmful, not only for your physical health, but your mental health as well. You're beautiful the way you are, and these fad diets will only cause more harm than good. Except the floor food diet. The floor food diet rocks.
that are good. And what? Things? Is it here? Yeah. It shan't be much longer. You're gonna be free, Wyatt. Don't uh. worry. Oh, it's actually kind of cleaning off my arm. Whoa! Look at that! Nice! Ew! Let's do it again, guys. Go in here, take off your socks, and go upstairs. Because the socks are wet, yeah. so yeah, take them off so they don't use. Thanks for watching.